I absolutely adore rhythm games. I don't play them all the time, but I would always take the time to play Tap Studio 3 or Groove Coaster on my way to school on my iPhone 4. But now that we have the Switch, I can play all of my games on the go. There aren't that many rhythm games on the Switch so far that have actually interested me, but upon seeing this game's trailer, I was instantly interested by its visuals. So with thanks to XD Network for providing us with a review code, let's get straight into Pedal Pedal Games' Muse Dash. Although there isn't a story, not having a story doesn't hinder any of what Muse Dash is. Within this stylish rhythm game, you'll begin with the character Rin and be thrown immediately into the music. As the song plays, you'll be running through the stage as enemies, attacks, and bosses head towards you to try and put a stop to your groove. You'll use the A buttons to attack enemies on the bottom track and the left button on the D-pad to jump and attack enemies or jump over incoming saw blades. In addition, you'll hold on to the respective button when rhythm streaks appear. Attack with both buttons against Gemini enemies and button mash against larger enemies with an exclamation point coming from them. This is all in an effort to not only enjoy the music, but to follow its beast and rack up the highest scores. Make sure you get your timing down as well. I found that due to enemies' appearance following the beat of the music, when you hit an enemy perfectly timed, you'll hit the rest of the oncoming enemies perfectly timed as well. However, there is more than just a base gameplay system. As you gain experience points and level up, by completing stages and challenges, you'll gain access to more of the game's core music and earn items. The more items you collect, the closer you'll get to earn a new character, the other two characters being Budo and Marija. But you'll also be able to earn character skins or an elfin. Each of these characters and their skins give you a special ability that will help you out, such as base Marija's ability of not missing when your combo is under 100. Elfins are these cute spirits that give you an added ability on top of your character's normal ability like Mio Sir's ability to let fever mode last for an extra 2 seconds. With it being a rhythm game, you know what you're getting into, and I've honestly been enjoying playing through the various amounts of songs on easy and hard mode. However, some songs have an even harder mode, and based upon the footage that was in the games trailer, I can definitely see myself failing stages repeatedly over and over again. Did you really have to ask? You know who I am, I'm a total weeb. I love how cute the character designs are and the overall aesthetic of the game. The way that each character skin has their own theme and attitude even though they're all based upon the same original character is interesting. You can also talk to characters on the simple hub menu, but they don't have a lot to say. The tracks that were selected to be in this game have definitely opened my ears to songs or genres I never thought I would like. I had no idea gothic techno music could sound so good. Of course, there are some songs I'm not too fond of, but the gameplay itself makes up for it when my taste in music clashes with the song. The stage clear song itself is so damn catchy that I never skip it. The game's own art style is amazing, but from looking on Paraparo's website, I saw that there are actually various loading screens that you can get in the game. I haven't unlocked any yet, but looking through all of this art makes me want to find out who each of these artists are. There is something for everyone who plays this game in terms of music and style. It truly is a shame that you can't get the audio files or art from the Steam version's files. Alright, there is also a Steam version. I actually bought it right before getting the review code for the Switch version. See, for the Switch version, you get the game's entire catalog of music as well as these extra tracks separated by volumes. This is titled as the Just As Planned DLC. On Steam, the base version, which is only about $3, features just the campaign's tracks, which is already a sizable amount of music. However, if you buy the Just As Planned DLC, you'll get the rest of the tracks that you see here in the Switch version, in addition to new volumes that are planned to be added every month. Moving away from DLC talk, the game on Steam performs fine, with a little bit of freezing here and there. However, once I got past the points where it froze the first time, I never had to deal with it again. I also prefer the start screen on Steam way more. The characters floating on the Switch version is nice, but far too plain in comparison. Jeez, man, this game. I honestly love it. The character designs, the stylization, especially the large variety of music. The only thing that could make this game better than it already is, is if I could make my own stages by adding my own music and sharing them with people all over the world. If you have the time and money, definitely purchase this game. Pick up the Switch version for music you can play and play through on the go or on your TV. But if you're on a tight budget, pick up the Steam version as well. Or pick up both. I definitely would have double dipped if I never received a review code. There is also the mobile version of the game, but even though I'm not into mobile gaming, those that are will definitely be able to continue the fun by connecting their save data through the PC and mobile versions. With all that being said, I'm giving Muse Dash a 5 out of 5.
Thank you once again to XD Network for providing us with a review code. Thank you as well to our super patron, the Duke of Dorks, for always supporting us. Tell us your thoughts about Muse Dash in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe for various content, check out sourcegaming.info and our Patreon so you can also support us by always remembering to return to the source.